Hello everyone and welcome to another video here in the channel. Today we're going to be talking about rocks. You've been asking about this, or I mentioned this in the last video, and today I'm going to show you the techniques that I used to create my little rock kit right here. And the cool thing about this is once you create a very nice kit, you can reuse it and create as many different variations as you want. Now, this is meant to be used as a sort of like wall or like a barrier or something, but you can apply the exact same techniques and the exact same principles that we're going to be talking about for any type of rock. Big rocks, medium rocks, small rocks, man-made rocks, any type of rocks. So let's go. Now you might be asking, well, couldn't we just like grab a pack of rocks online or download some rocks from uh, Quixel or things like that? And the answer is yes, you can always just download the assets. But the fun part or a lot of the fun things about this whole process is making them ourselves. Not only that, but when you make your own stuff, first of all, you're going to get better as an artist because you're going to be able to tackle like more and more advanced things. And second of all, you're going to be able to get a more unique result because if you use the stuff that Quixel has or a lot of this like packages online, what's going to end up happening is that everyone else who uses the exact same stuff will get a a similar result and your portfolio and everyone else's portfolio will look very very similar so this is part of like the uniqueness of things so i'm going to start with this block right here i'm going to break symmetry i as you can see uh, turn on dynamesh and i'm going to go to control shift and select my knife curve brush and with this knife curve brush, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start playing a little bit with the silhouette of the object. And I really like the knife brush in this case because we can go for very, very intense or extreme angles like this one's right here and start getting something that looks interesting. Now, similarly to what we did with the other um, asset, the archway, you don't want to be adding like too much detail everywhere, right? Like it should be something that we, um, that, that that's... It has a little bit of thought to it, right? And uh, yeah, we're going to be using this. Now, how many rocks do you need to do? I usually recommend doing at least five rocks to, to create like a kit because that way you're going to be able to have a little bit of variation. And you want to divide those rocks into different shapes and sizes. So this one right here is going to be a big rock. And I'm going to have one big rock, a second big rock, and then probably like two medium rocks, and let's do two small rocks as well. The cool thing about this is that we actually have multiple sides to this. We have the front side right here, we have the back side right here, side view, top view even. So you can get a lot of different variation as long as you make sure to, to keep each like specific part of the rock a little bit separated, right? So let's dynamesh again. We definitely need to increase the resolution quite a bit for this process, so I'm gonna I'm just going to do that and add a little bit more resolution. There we go. And now we need to start looking again at the reference and seeing how these things work, right? Because rocks, rocks are very interesting. They get chipped away. They don't get carved in. When you start carving something, that's that's actually like some artisan doing some work. So I'm going to go with uh, my special brush here that I've mentioned before, which is the Trim Smooth Border. So this one right here, Lips on the Brushes. It's a default brush, but it's hidden here on the, on the light box. And it's this one, Trim Smooth Borders. And I really like this one because as you can see, it, it helps me with this sort of like chipped effect without really destroying um, the initial planes that we had, right? So we can start building more planes while still keeping like a very nice clean border on the rest of the element. Um, another thing that's very common nowadays when working with this kind of like environment assets is to actually go to the place that you're referencing or the kind of like stuff that you're doing and do photogrammetry. Now, photogrammetry is a great, great thing. I don't think we're going to be able to cover it on this course in particular, but I do believe I have a couple of videos about it on the YouTube channel. And it allows you to, to generate a very realistic result because you're literally scanning like a rock or a monument or a statue or something. So it's a good way to get very, very high realism. The only danger that I see with um, photogrammetry it's the fact that if you're still learning about the 3D world and someone asks you to do something that you've done similarly with photogrammetry and you don't have the skills, well, that's going to be complicated, right? Because you're going to have to tell him, hey, you know what? Like that like super cool statue that you see on my portfolio, I actually didn't sculpt it. I don't know how to sculpt it to that level. And that could potentially lose you a couple of opportunities, right? Now, keep in mind that when we're dealing with this kind of like construction here, we always want to think about, again, primary forms, secondary forms, tertiary forms. I'm going to go back to trim dynamic here to clean some stuff up. And we want to mix and match a little bit of everything. So we're going to have big flat areas where there's not much happening, smooth round areas where there's a little bit of detail happening. And then maybe, for instance, we can go with clay buildup at a specific type of detail or something that is, I don't know, like erosion or maybe like a gun impact or a sword impact or something. And it's going to help me tell a story with my asset. I really like using clay build up here because it gives me a very sort of like destroyed effect, kind of like someone took a hammer there and literally went to town. 
There we go. So that way we get something that looks interesting. Now, I don't like the fact that this is completely flat. Yes, we have some like nice like changes in volume there, but if you want to like gather or generate a little bit of like difference on the on the side view or front view as well, one thing we can do is masking. So I'm going to go ahead here and for instance, I'm going to go to mask lasso and I'm going to mask a section right there on the stone like that. Then I'm going to invert the mask and with W, I'm just going to push it forward a little bit like that. And once I do that, we can go back where our trim smooth border, just start blending it a little bit. So now it's going to look like this stone had like a different, I don't know, grain or something going in this particular direction. And it's going to look interesting. We can even go with trim dynamic, flatten a couple of these areas, right? But now it looks way, way more interesting. It's going to look a little bit more interesting. I got a question on the Discord a couple of uh, days ago. Someone was asking, it's like, oh, should I be sculpting at the speed that you're sculpting? No, of course not. If you are just starting or if you're just learning about the 3D world, then it's completely understandable that it will take you a little bit longer to get to a result than what it takes me, right? Now, once you get better and maybe you're a little bit of a pro already, you're a pro looking to branch out into environment and you want to see some of these techniques, then yeah, you might be able to sculpt even faster than me. And that's great. Efficiency is always, always important. But I do tell my students to be very, very careful about not sacrificing quality for the sake of speed, especially in personal projects like this, like portfolio projects or or learning projects where you're like trying to understand a process, take enough time and take enough uh, opportunity to really understand how things are supposed to be done so that you get a nice result, okay? So there we go. That's another little technique right there, which is the masking technique to get a little bit more variation. Again, we don't want to overdo it. A very common mistake when people are doing rocks is that they want to add like details and damage everywhere. You don't want that. You, you definitely don't want that. Yes, we can play with the silhouette. Yes, we can play with the forms. But let, let's not exaggerate and make something like completely, completely destroyed. And again, you can see it here on the detail. Look at that stone right there. It's a pretty much a big surface right there, and it has the shift effects right here. And of course, it has like a little bit of a, of a more, not as a squarish, uh, like round shape. So here, I might go and just like cut a couple of like corners a little bit more, you know, just to round things, round things off a little bit. And then, for instance, trim dynamic, just like play a little bit with that. That way, when we uh, create our barrier, we're going to be doing a wall and pretty much everything that we need to do with stones. We're going to be doing this with this kit that we're building we're going to be able to get a nice result. Remember that we can use the alphas that I've mentioned about to add more detail later on. But right now, I want to focus on this. And what I'm mainly focusing on, there's a very nice material that I like to use here, the monster clay, is the changing planes, right? So where do I see a neutral gray? Where do I see a dark gray? And where do I see a light gray? Because those changes in planes, those are what the, or those are the way in which we're going to be able to, again, to tell a story, okay? For instance, there, kind of like, looks like there could be a crack they're going interestingly all the way down here. There we go. Now we go to the side view and let's try to think about this side view as a different stone. Like ignore the fact that we've already done this thing right here and let's think like this is a different stone. So what can we do? Well, again, if we go with the train smooth border, I really like this plane that we have down here. I'm really gonna push it a little bit. There we go. Then this whole corner Let's damage it a little bit. That. And then we can dynamish at any point just to relax the geometry and make sure that we don't have any non manifold geometry on the borders. Nice, I like this one. Now it kinda looks a little bit weird on this side, right? Like uh because of the of the push. So again, if I need to modify or change a couple of things on the other side, just to make this thing look a little bit more interesting, let's do that. Okay, and that way, eventually we're going to have this one. Here, let me show you a trick. I can press Control Shift and S to drop, or sorry, uh, Shift S to drop a snapshot right there. And then we can move this one right here. And you can get an idea of how this thing is going to look compared to this one. So the first thing that I noticed is like, hey, you know what? Like, that looks very, very nice, but that we definitely need probably a little bit more damage here to change the shadows. All right. So that's a very, very cool trick. You drop a, a snapshot, again, shift S to drop a snapshot on the on the viewport. And that way you can uh, control N to clean this. So we could have this one right here. Oh, let's say we have this one right here, shift S. And that way I can continue working on this one and I can reference that one and make sure that I'm not doing more detail than what, than what I have on that face, right? It, it, it keeps, um, we keep the detail uh, proportionate or we keep the detail close to what we have on that one. 
Again, like very strong edges that I'm seeing there. Definitely want to like minimize. Do this one right here. And there we go. So that's going to be a second stone that we can use for our block. It's the same stone, but it's like a second, like a different face of the stone. If it, I still think it looks a little bit too, like a, uh, I don't know what the word is, too straight. So it doesn't look as natural. Let me a string dynamic to just like bend this a little bit right there. We can't be too much, like we can't exaggerate too much, right? Because otherwise it's going to start breaking other parts of the stone. But it could definitely benefit from a little bit more of a change in silhouette, especially there, for instance. Like that that corner right there looks way too unnatural in my opinion. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Eventually, of course, like we don't need to have it like completely straight. We can, you know, rotate a little bit um, and um, and even modify the scale and things like that. So yeah, that looks uh, that looks good. Let's just drop it right there. And let's just do one final one right here. Because I want to show you one more brush that I'd like to use, which is the mallet brush. We've mentioned this one before as well. But just want to make sure that everyone um, is aware of this one. Because sometimes people will go through the videos very, very quickly, just getting to the specific points that they want to see, which is perfectly fine. But you might miss some little tips and tricks here and there. So mallet. And then this is the mallet fast. And here on the mallet fast... This one is a little bit more aggressive. It will carve stuff up, as you can see right here, but it will keep a very nice chisel look. So what I do is when I see a straight line like this, again, from a design perspective, I'll hit that line to break it up a little bit, as you can see right there, and then leave it straight for a little bit and then hit it again. So that's my primary detail, my secondary detail, and eventually once we add like the pores and all that kind of stuff to the stone, those are gonna be my tertiary details. That's one way that I like to look at the sort of like construction of these elements. And then if I see I made like way too intense of a change, I can use stream dynamic here, sort of like blend stuff together and sort of like erase elements. And again, just play with the forms, play with the shapes. It's it's one of those things that I really have a an issue trying to explain the the form situation. And I've talked about this before again in live streams and videos where I explained that form is the basic construction of the elements. So when I'm looking at this whole thing right here, I'm I'm visually thinking about the basic shapes that are making up this element right here. So I break this up and actually let me show you real quick. I'm going to show you because I think this is a very, very important concept and it's a little bit more of a design concept, right? But when I'm looking at this stone, what I'm looking at are the different planes that we have. So we have this plane right here and then we have a different plane right here, right? And I think to myself, do we need something different here? And the answer might be yes. What about adding another plane, like a little bit of a stronger plane down here? So all of those changes, all of those like planes that I'm saying, again, like a very geometric deconstruction of the element, that's what I'm looking at. Why? Because our brain, the way our brain sees shapes and sees forms in the real world is this one. It will look at the shapes first and then it will try to understand all of the detail that lives within that shape. So for instance, this is a huge shape right here. Might be worth it to go here to the top for instance let's grab the trim smooth border and break that shape a little bit right like generate a dent like a big dent right there so that we can see a little bit of a different effect on this upper part okay Again, trim smooth border there, just like playing around. Now we have this huge like surface and comparing to this one, like it, it's not very normal to have that much surface. So let me show you a final thing that I like to do with um, with stones. And after that, we'll, we'll call this video done. I'll go and do all of the different stones that we need. So we need again, like six different stones. And once I have all of those stones, we'll jump back and I'll show you how to build our element. This is exercise, by the way, this like building stones thing. Once you do it a couple of times, you'll be very, very fast. But every now and then when I'm feeling bored, another question that I get frequently is like, what do you do when you don't have any motivation? I just like turn on ZBrush or any other software. And I try to do things that I know I'm like, eventually going to need. And rocks, you're always going to be needing rocks. So if you are feeling bored one day and you don't know what to do, literally just open ZBrush, sculpt a rock for like 10 or 15 minutes. And believe me, you will find the inspiration. Like you will find the... Uh, a little bit of a, of a boost in energy because just creating something can really motivate us to to keep doing like very very cool things. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. You can see, look at that, looking very very nice. Now this does seem like a very a little bit of a mirror effect right there. So I'm gonna have, like fix it. One thing I like to do is just with clay build up, just fill in back all of the detail there, and then trim dynamic, and just fill it in. 
Okay, so you can reconstruct parts of the stone. We're going to be using this to create all of our modular assets, all of our modular barriers. And the one thing that we want to avoid as much as we can is to try and, um, and avoid having something that's very obvious, right? Like you don't want people to be looking at your stuff and be like, oh, look at that like specific scratch. Like I can see it here and here and here. That defeats the purpose of making a modular asset. Now, as I mentioned, the final thing that we need to do here, and I'm going to clear those up, is I'm going to go here to a noise all the way down here to surface, there we go, and turn on noise. And with noise, we can add a little bit of noise. So I'm going to increase the noise scale, and I like to change the graph here. Change the scale right there, not too much. There we go, that's a lot better. And we can play here with the, with the profile, there we go. Like, let's push that one in. Strength, again, very, very soft, something like that, and just hit OK. And as you can see, that's going to give me a little bit of a, of a texture effect. I'm going to hit apply. Not all of the details going to be there because uh, that's like a bump map that's being projected onto the element. So you might need to go in and like accentuate a couple of elements. And I like to I like to go to go. I also like to go in, change a couple of elements right there, and then even with trim dynamic, clean a couple of other areas. Like you don't want to have noise everywhere. Having a couple of rest areas or clean areas is always a good uh, a good idea. Another trick here just to finalize this video that you can use to evaluate whether or not your stone is looking uh, is looking nice is change the material to something that has a little bit more gloss, like the bling material, right? If you go to the bling material and you go to like a medium gray color right here, seems like I have poly paint, apparently. Let's turn it off. There we go. We should be able to see how the highlights and the high points like behave. There's even a normal map material. This one right here is going to show you how the normal map is going to look. Not a lot of people use this one, to be honest, but it's a good way to evaluate how light will respond to the elements. So when you see a side, for instance, on your stone right here, and it looks like there's different values, right? Like we have that very nice red value in between this like purple value. That tells me that that detail is going to pop out very, very nicely. If everything's very like normal like this, yeah, you might want to go in again and uh, just play a little bit. Again, don't go too crazy. We don't want to make this hero assets. These are more modular assets, but it's a good idea to just add a little bit of variation. So there, the normal material, definitely a good, uh, a good option here to evaluate how good or how well we're doing with our uh, with our construction of our assets. So that's it, my friends. That's just a little taste on what you can do with ZBrush and Sculpting Rocks. There's a bunch of other tools that you can learn, of course. We got the courses here down in the description if you want to check them out. But this is the process that I like to do whenever I'm tackling something that needs to be very unique and, again, very modular, okay? So hopefully you like this video. If you want to see a little bit more of the process or you want me to show you some of the other stuff, let me know here in the comments, and I'll be waiting for you on the next one, okay? Don't forget, always learning, always improving.